Noah Schoff, English Nine Honors, April 17th, 2015. Marriage can't change. Although same-sex marriage is a popular topic, worldwide religions believe marriage can only be between a man and a woman and that a homosexual relationships aren't stable compared to opposite sex marriages. I chose to write this. I wanted my name on this paper as proof I was not gay. Everyone needs to stop thinking that just because I hang out with girls and like singing. I am arguing against gay marriage. I am clearly not gay. Accepting the label documents how I overcame the shame of being gay while being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormon Church. It is a story of growing up, getting knocked down, and receiving God's love. This series will take you through my 20 years of living and all the stories I was too afraid to tell. I don't speak for my whole community. Everyone's journey is unique, but there is hope and there is a path to accepting the label. Here's mine. While I was a freshman in high school, I was the most homophobic and it made me unhappy. I was old enough to recognize the consequences of being gay in the LDS church and at my home. I was also old enough to realize it was more than curiosity. This internal struggle corresponded with my intense homophobia. Hello fans. I am in my new church building and we're going to go in it soon and it's really pretty and I hope you like it. Come visit November 18th. It was in the sticky summer sun, somewhere in Tennessee, where I learned being homophobic was how I can be accepted. I was on a week-long Boy Scout trip in the Smokies. We were driving back from our day of activities and the song Cheerleader was playing on the radio. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. Whatever, I don't even know it. I was vibing to the music and finally felt free from all the pressures to be like the other boys. Cheerleader faded and the energy went down. Now the news was on. I was listening, but slowly letting my eyes fade into the rolling hills we were passing by. Then the radio broadcaster announced, in a five to four vote, the Supreme Court has decided to rule in favor of same-sex marriage. My daydreaming was over. I was trapped in a car where anger, fear, and disappointment clouded all my senses. The teenage boys sitting in the minivan, who were all Mormon, were absolutely disgusted. How could this have happened? This is so wrong. We lost. I didn't know how to respond, but I knew I had to be mad. I had to be angry and I had to be upset. What has the world come to? I shouted across the car. Immediately, those words elevated my status within the group, but those words also crushed me inside. I wasn't just hating on a group of people who I thought were sinful and immoral. I was hating on myself too, and deep down, I knew it. But hating myself was easier than being hated by others. It's why I wrote Why Marriage Can't Change. I didn't choose to write that essay solely on my own. I was influenced by my church. The weekend before I had to pick an essay topic, I watched my church leaders come together for a general conference. All the Mormons, remember the Church of Jesus Christ of the Saints, watched our church leaders address the whole church. A major theme at the conference was how marriage was under attack. I personally felt it was my responsibility to defend marriage. It was how I chose to respond to my attraction to men. It was logical. I could admit that I was gay, get bullied at school, feel like a disappointment at home, and have a church counselor help me suppress my unnatural thoughts. Or I could be a valiant servant of the Lord and keep his commandments, and then I would be happy. I'm not in good place mainly because of my class I'm taking for at college. I have to take a class called Eternal Family. It's all about marriage and families. And as you know, that's probably triggering for someone who can't marry in the church or they have to leave. I mean, I could marry, but I can't, I know. They always are like, everyone's welcome to the church. You can have those feelings. You can be attracted to the same gender. And you could stay in the church. I don't think people understand the, how hard it is to be attracted to someone and not be able to act on it. There's just no hope there. It's just hard to see that I can't be happy right now. Why can't I be happy right now? So right now, what am I gonna do? Keep lying, keep pretending everything's all right when it's definitely not. Keep 
pretending I have a girlfriend that I'm gonna get married and go to the temple and be so happy. It's, everything's gonna be great. I'll do it. I'm just sick of doing it. I'm just so sick of it. I'm sorry this is long. I'm just sick of it. I'm just over it. I'm I'm over it. 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 Why would I be made this way if I can't be happy in this life? I remember growing up and getting to the age where you start developing crushes and you go on dates or whatever. I was instructed to always follow a church pamphlet called The For Strength of Youth. It reinforced our church values and was intended for the youth to read. This pamphlet was emphasized as scripture, meaning we should memorize it and follow it with exactness. In the sexual purity chapter, there is a paragraph on homosexual behavior. This paragraph was really the only time I saw gay or same-sex attraction mentioned in my church. Homosexual and lesbian behavior is a serious sin. If you find yourself struggling with same gender attraction or if you are being persuaded to pursue an inappropriate behavior, seek counsel from your parents and your bishop. They will help you. My teen years were tormented by those words. I repeated those words over and over in my brain, trying to twist them in a way where I wasn't sinning, or I wasn't struggling. Some days when I was feeling extra hopeless, I would just open that section and see if it's magically changed. There was nothing more I wanted than for it to just disappear. If they would disappear, then I would feel like, you know, the, my favorite part of myself wasn't going to affect where I would go once I die. High school dragged on and the rumors that I was gay followed. I was alone. I didn't have anyone to reach out to and I didn't want to reach out to anyone. They would then tell everyone I was gay and that was too risky. The only place I felt validation and understood was on the internet. It provided ample resources, but those followed with guilt and shame. This time it was different. It wasn't some soccer player who asked if I was gay. This was me actually acting on my same sex attraction. And I felt like I was allowing a disease to run wild through my body. And I had two choices. I could try to cure my disease, I could get the treatments, or I could live with the disease. I already felt so lifeless anyway. <laughs>